Oh. <laughs> that was in seconds. What are you talking about? I didn't have a chance to put the bloody splash screen up. Welcome to Crusader Kings 3, where today we die, apparently. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> that was like two days after the end of yesterday's episode and she just died. For freak's sake. Welcome. Okay, there we go. That's hilarious. Um, we are playing as the mighty, I guess now, Queen Galinda Dates of Venice. The 45-year-old drunkard? Well, she got administrator, which is pretty fantastic. Um, wow, look at her. Genius, Midas Touch, drunkard, which obviously isn't great, but that's okay. Uh, it's probably one of the better health uh management uh stress management traits to be fair and we've also got administrator there too i mean her traits are pretty good as well her son though the one to be watched look at this guy he is genius he is herculean he or herculean or Her Her herculean however you want to say it and a flagellant flagellant plus uh herculean is probably a really really nice stress management combo isn't it you are never going unless you flagellate yourself when you're already wounded and potentially risk maiming or severely injuring. That's quite a nice combo. So, wow, here we are. Holy shit. Um, so she is probably gonna die a lot sooner than her mother. Masalyn Jars at the age of 89. Whoa. Um, man, I wish I could remember what her stewardship ended up being because that is the score to beat her. Huh? And here we are, Jalinda Dates. Uh, now, what we really want to do to really help secure the dynasty, to really help lock things down, we want to kill off the... Uh, our our daughter-in-law, our husband, our husband's wife. No, that's us. We want to kill off our son's wife because she's garbage. If we can marry, oh my god, wow. Okay, never mind then. If we can marry our son's wife off to, uh, if, if we can get a beautiful son's wife. My god, I'm really fucking this up, aren't I? If we can marry our son off to someone who is beautiful, there's a fairly obvious outcome there. Um, so that's what we're gonna go for. Although, to be fair, our granddaughter Anastasia Money, already Amazonian and genius. I would love to skip straight to her. This is the problem with playing her killing characters now, is they're gonna live for bloody years compared to everything else. Right, well, here we are then. A fresh day for the House Money Dynasty. So, uh, again, yesterday I kind of asked what we want to do for the, you know, for the end goals. Um, somebody came up with this pretty good plan where apparently if we, um, if we get the Empire of Romagna or the Kingdom of Romagna, um, oh, it's anointed Kingdom of Romagna, shit. Um, basically, if we could control most of that, which we are, you know, we're doing a pretty okay job with, so deal with Ancona, basically. Um... That's it, we can declare war with no cast a spell. I don't think I've ever seen that before. Whoa. Um, anyway, if we can get the rest of the Kingdom of Romania, we can apparently usurp it from the Pope and vassalize him because the papacy, uh, or, or his, his capital, sorry, count is obviously a, a du jour part of that. Um, Latium, I think it is. Yeah, so we can we can vassalize him in a legit way. Well, you can never do that in CK2 because, of course, it would be um, the, the Duchy level title, the, the, the Archbishop of Latium, counted as part of the Papacy Kingdom title, and that was under nothing. Um, so it's much harder to do that. But if we could get a vassal pope, that makes us a, the, the dominant power in, in the Catholic world. Then, if we want to reform the religion, we already have Rome under us. We just revoke the title, and then we go out from there. And what's the Pope going to do at that point? We've already got his seat of power. So there's a lot to do. Um, realistically, Byzantium is still our big, scary... A big, scary land owned by a big, scary, absolute unit in awe of that land. What... How do we start, then? Um, I'm going to keep it on, I think... Duty folks would help out with plots if we do want to deal with our sons. I mean, look, let's be honest. We don't need to murder our son's wife right now. But on our granddaughter, we could just marry off to a... Uh, or arrange marriage uh, to a beautiful character and still get, hopefully, the traits via that line of the family. Um, our direct descendants, so it's not a big deal. Uh, we'll go well focus, seeing as we are Venice. We'll try and tidy up the rest of the... Um, We'll try and get Architect again so, so we can really push forward with that. The other goal, really, in the short term is becoming Cultural Head again. So, Lombardy or whoever the hell it is now. Um, oh, Duke Ludovico of Piedmont. Fair enough. So, Fabricating Claims is going to be our best friend this time around. Um, so, we've already got claims going down in Ancona. Three months left, not too bad. We became the new head of the... Oh, were we... New head of the Contarini Dynasty. Were we not the head before with our previous character? Really? I'm almost certain we were. Wow, that's weird. Maybe it's just calculated it now that we've unpaused and succession's kind of cleared up. Not entirely sure. Anyway, look at that friendless churl of Ardo, Prince Beth Jesus says. My brother and vassal. Another genius. Brilliant. Uh, 
Should we beat... <laughs> we can beat our 43-year-old brother. Our 43-year-old Duke brother. Um, there's no way for a Duke to act. Or everyone has gone as red as a beet. Uh, we've got two different types of beet. And then we have a scalding. Sure. There's no way for him to act. To be fair, it's true. I mean, either way, we gain stress. Is that all because we're shy? Oh, that one is just 10 stress because we are basically being rude. Um, I'm going to do whatever gives us the least stress because we don't want to be immediately stressing characters out. Many people have shouted at me in the other series over that one. Um, our heir, Prince of Rado. I mean, I would love to, again, go straight for our granddaughter, but unfortunately, we can't jump two steps over. Um, we'll consider some other... Other candidates first before we dive in on that. But I have a feeling it's going to be Everardo with, with absolutely no no competition. Um, yeah, I, I mean, it's him. I, I was looking to see if we had any other kind of genius. Genius or beautiful might have still been a consideration. Um, but he's more than okay. Sure, why not? We've got a marriage there that we actually can't. Uh, hey? We, we can't? Uh, matrilineal? No. We've got the patrol on into a marriage. Oh, because he's imprisoned. I like that it doesn't tell us he's imprisoned. It just said... What did it say before? Masalinja. Oh, her name is Masalinja as well. Oh, well, that's confusing the hell out of me. Yeah, it is because he's in prison. Fair enough then. Um, and then we could also marry someone else off who is in prison. Fantastic. Man, that'd be so good though. Who are you again? Uh, Castile. Bear in mind, Castile picked up a lot of land, didn't they? So that would be a hell of an ally to get. We'll just wait on those. I'm not going to cancel them or anything like that. We'll just wait until hopefully an opportunity presents itself where they can get out of prison and we can marry them off. Right, look at this council, though. 21, 29, thir 13. Ooh, maybe we can swap you up someone better. There we are. Look at this. 21, 29, 17, 20, and, well, 4. Our archbishop is absolute garbage. Can we get rid of him? When we make our own religion, we need to make a, a bloody point about not having um, temporal for life. Because that is just garbage. Absolute anus. Oh, God. Now a good steward died, too. Must have heard me talking about him. Yeah, this guy is uh, real shits here really bad. So you have a chance of... Oh, ugly, though. Why ugly? No, that's not... That's not right. No, 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 no. Not, not gonna happen. Break that betrothal right now. That's awful. Um, how do we break the betrothal? Break the betrothal. Get out of here. We're not marrying up. Why would I do that? That's completely countering all this work we've put into it so far. We've got matrilineal still, because all our good family members, you know, we want, we want potential for election. Um, and let's see if we can get you... A beautiful husband. A beautiful money, you say. Look at this. The golden lineup. Do it. I believe in you. It doesn't really matter. Match on or otherwise at that point, does it? Uh, thank you very much. A city of Ancona is fabricated on. Um, so we've got Ancona. What are the claims do we have here? We just have Ancona. Why did I start with Ancona? That's weird. Right, there we go. So we're marrying you, a Herculean quick guy, to someone who's possessed. What are these fucking... No. What are these betrothals that the AI is making. Good lord. And then we're marrying you, Genius and Hale, to... What? I wasn't going for alliances. Well, clearly not, because this guy isn't related to anybody. Right, break that betrothal as well. Let's do this all fresh, because I feel like the AI have really, really fucked this one up. Uh, children like Guardians. So we've got Fortuna Money, which, I mean, uh, Fortunata Money, even then, is still a fantastic name for a member of the Money Dynasty. And she uh, just bloody god-awful traits. She is really low tier. Um... Wow. Uh, fine, we'll deal with it. Whatever. My, we've, we've got to give her all the help she can get, right? And then, Guardian for you, we apparently can't. Oh. Bizarre. Okay, never mind then. Goodbye. Uh, family members get married. So let's try this again then. So this is the uh, uh, Herculean Quick character. I think we probably want to go for what we've got there. Beautiful and Tonga. What does that mean? Lisping. Got it. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Hindsight, that makes way more sense. Uh, I'm going to go for you, because that way there is a very small chance of getting Genius and Herculean in the same character. How old is she? 34. Uh, it's a gamble worth taking, I think. Right, you can go. Thank you. And then we've got Maslin Jars. Bear in we're Genius as well, so he does contribute slightly to Genius Inheritance Chance. Maslin Jars, we have Genius and Hale. Uh, whoa, look at this. Robust and beautiful. Okay. Yeah, they are related as well. Of course they are. Of course they are. It's just... It, this is truly the family circle playthrough if we were ever going to do that. Bollocks. Well, we weren't endorsed by our bishop, so I thought the best way to do it would just be to... Just to keep him on sway for a while. But unfortunately, that stressed her out to the extent that we now need to do something about it. You shit. Um, another feast. We can't keep having these shy characters. Uh, I guess we'll just indulge in some drink then. 
Hooray! Minus 31 stress. There we are. We're also going to Pilgrimage. They've got a chance of reducing stress. I think that's uh, one of the pseudo-random outcomes, though. Fine. Jerusalem. $687 reduced. Did I just spend on that? Bloody hell. Ooh. 250 piety. With 24% chance of getting the tray ill. That's unlikely. Yeah, okay. We, we dodged a bullet there. We don't want to be traveling while ill. We gain the extra party to that. I want to make the Pope like us for the fairly obvious reason that the Pope is basically... There we go. Bankrolled our entire round so far. So we might as well stay on top of it, huh? Pray is St. Matthew. Right. How are we looking with our upgrades? Am I mistaken in thinking we had more upgrades available because of the cranes? Oh, we just don't have the gold. Right. Okay. So there are upgrades available. We're just in a weird position now where we've got no bloody gold to fund them. Um, I assume we have golden obligations with this character. Right, okay. Well, let's get our spy master out there then. We might as well put them to good work, seeing as we've got a good spy master. Um, Byzantium. I hear those people are known for their, uh, rebellious nature. Oh, I recruited bloody knights and now we're also stressed out. For frig's sake, shy sucks. Man, we need to avoid that. Uh, let's go on a hump and how long? For four years. Weird, it's like I just did that. You can also, by the way, with this mod, convert other holdings to metropolises as well. So you could say hold Rome, Venice, Byzantium. You could go for the, like all the capitals and, and convert them yourself into metropolises if you have the gold for it. I think for us, probably unnecessary. Uh, I think that'd be, a, that'd be kind of a long-term kind of silly playthrough. Um, but our goal, I think, should just be to create that religion. Should be to create the... That, that's already going to be hard enough. Bear in mind, we need to grab Rome... Uh, we need to go to war against the HRE. We need to grab Jerusalem, which is currently under Byzantium. Like, we, this is still going to force us to fight all the biggest powerhouses in Europe uh, as tiny little island nation of Venice. So I think reforming a religion is still a fantastic end goal to, for, for this series. Put that money to good use. Island City of Thermo next. Excellent. As long as no one else, I, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of worried that because our Archbishop is, well, uh, terrible, god-awful, if you pardon the pun, uh, I'm a little worried that the HRE is probably going to swoop in and clap them when we're just basically too busy fabricating claims on the whole thing. Um, husband, you are fucking all over the place, huh? I would say manage domain for the plus two. <laughs> uh, that's terrible. Fine, we'll put you on your best outcome. We could go, I guess, just... Plus one. Oh, go on then, round us out. He, he, he's not particularly skilled in any area. I think the overall boost all around would be a bit more beneficial. Right, it's Spoleto. What's going on there? Oh, we've got vassals rebelling against vassals. Um, specifically, the person that we revoke the title from, right? Or the daughter of the person we revoke the title from. Definitely don't hate us, so we've got that going for us, which is nice. We'll send them a gift. Just because it looks as if they're probably going to win. Bear in mind, they control almost all of the Duchess Spoleto. He died. Excellent. Uh, <laughs> my bishop died. Thank God. We are up to seven learning now. So he's gone from terrible to poor. What is with these bishops? It's a shame there's no College of Cardinal style system like there is in CK3 where we can scum up the succession. It is purely just, as far as I know, the Archbishop is uh, elected completely randomly, generated on the death of the previous Archbishop. Um, so that is pretty poor for us. Got very unlucky there twice in a row. I wonder what determines that. Again, I don't want to start poking around into CK3 code quite yet. I, I, want, I want to keep the magic going for as long as possible. But there are some things that are just a freaking mystery. Like, how the hell house heads are decided? That is just complete witchcraft. Oh! Dynasty Legacy. Okay. Um, what have you got for me? Better education traits is, is genuinely a, uh, a convincing argument. Um, Cast a spell like control growth is really nice. Well, law. Um... Long reach. Uh, hostile scheme success chance pretty good. But resilient bloodline. I mean, which would I prefer? Better education traits or resilient bloodline? Keep those conge... Well, with good breeding, we can keep hold of those traits anyway. But we can't guarantee good education. I think I'm going to go for it. A studious youth. What is the... Our pure development. Like, like development is... Something that seems a bit more nebulous. It's like something that, that is quite clearly very important, but it's quite difficult to actually grow if you don't have the economy to do it, which obviously makes sense. But it seems like it's way more important that the, than has attention drawn to it. Does that make sense? Like, it's just it's just a stat right here. Um, whereas, like, the Basilius has 35% bonus to his levies, 35% extra taxes, 10,000 supply limit. I mean, it's insane. Uh, it's one thing grows 0 0.9. That's interesting to remember. 71 out of 100 on development for Byzantium. We are... We're up to 59, though. And we're getting three monthly growth. Oh, Byzantium, you are so doomed. We're going to be the new capital of the world. Mark my words. And look at this. 
Oh my god, we can upgrade so many things now. What have we unlocked recently that has allowed us to do that? I'm not entirely sure, but look at this. Control growth is up. Prestige, stress loss plus 35%. I'm going to go for the Royal Palace first because we seem to be cursed to having nothing but... Uh, Nothing but bloody stressful characters or, or shy characters all the time. Thank you, Popo. We'll use it very wisely. Very wisely indeed, sir. Thank you, sir. Right. Let's get to blackmailing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Bit more gold there. What's that? Like another two payments? That should be another 400 minimum. 69 gold, but we're getting 285 per full blackmail. I don't think anybody's going to be actually able to pay it off, but, you know. Um, probably worth bouncing over to the HRE. We'll let them stick around a bit longer in Byzantium. See what else we can find. Road Palace 2 is complete. For these, we need... Oh, it's just... It's just gold we're lacking. Have we really smashed all those cultural innovations already? Uh, we don't have cranes still, so I don't know quite... Why we're suddenly allowed to build all that. What, what was it we needed? We need the cranes for this one, right? Level 2? Am I going insane? That was definitely cranes we needed, if I'm not mistaken. Now we seem to have a lot, a load of stuff to be upgraded. Huh. Okay, fair enough. Um, we'll go for the Great Library next then for the holding taxes. The development growth 50% on top of that. We will beat Basil. Mark my words. Verona split away. Oh, see, so you all of the Dutch. Wow, okay. Italy is completely splintered away. Now, uh, the only thing I'm concerned about here is Byzantium is getting a real easy foot in the door. We're going to have to be very careful that they don't immediately swipe some of this stuff up. And again, this is where I'm thinking, you know, at the end of yesterday, I kind of thought we could flip religion, use that to our advantage to move into uh, into some of these realms if we wanted to convert because we haven't exactly got many vassals. So it's, it's quite a cheap process if we want to do that. Actually, before I forget, somebody said in the comments yesterday that on the mod page, there's a, a kind of map of all of the different metropolises. What I didn't realize, there are actually subtypes of metropolises as well. So I'll put it up on screen very quickly. Um, but there are metropolises that are only present after 1066. So there's places like London, Paris. You've got uh, red are the lesser metropolises, so Venice. Um, a lot of them in Italy. And quite a lot around kind of northern India, the Himalayas area too. There are these things called greater metropolises, which are Cordoba, Baghdad, and Constantinople. And then there's also the Pentarchy in, in purple. Um... I think as a as a cool end game goal, we could try and grab the the three greater metropolises and the Pentarchy and hold them personally along with Venice. So our so our final personal domain would be Cordoba, Constantinople, Baghdad, Antioch, Jerusalem, Alexandria, and Rome. Have I missed one? I don't think so. Um, I think that'd be freaking awesome. As as a, again our personal domain, not giving them out to vassals or anything either, but holding them also along with Venice, City of Light, City of Wonders as kind of the kind of the great capital of them all. Because it also, if we grab those, kind of falls bang somewhat in the center, a little bit off from the center. I will admit. Um, it was Baghdad, like around, around, around there. If we include everything, so it's it's decently close. Like, since we'd be like, what here? Where's here? Is there a metropolis here? Probably not. Uh, no, unfortunately not. But hey, that, that's quite close. Uh, it's on the Mediterranean at least, right? So that could be quite a fun goal. We'll see how we get on. We'll see how we get on. I'm not going to commit to that quite yet, but I think that with the religion and converting all the metropolises, the greater metropolises and the pentarchy metropolises to our new religion of money would be an incredible way to end this series. It would also be incredibly difficult to pull off too. So all of this kind of shit we've been sat around building ourselves up is going to have to be still applied, I think, very carefully if we want to succeed. How is Anastasia money coming out? Oh, look at this. Right, okay, stewardship. And then we educate her personally. Perfect. With the new education that we got, I don't know how effective it is. I have no idea how this uh, this this dynasty legacy works. Hopefully, that can provide us with some uh, with some uh, an extra leg up for basically where you know we weren't playing as this character and she basically was uneducated for quite a while there. But I have a lot of faith in this character. Humble, um, humble is obviously quite nice. Uh, deceitful, or we've got honest. Honest is also virtuous to Catholics. We lose a little bit of. Um, we lose a little bit of intrigue. Actually, we lose a significant amount of intrigue. But I think I could do it. Generous, compassionate. Oh, shit. Uh, she's already generous and compassionate. <laughs> Monthly income minus 10%. Well, to be fair, we've been very generous with our money in Venice. Immediately dropping it into, you know, funding public works and things like that. You kind of know. We're not, we're not sat on a mountain of gold making our dynasty ridiculously powerful. I mean, we are, but that's just a side effect of, you know, all the other things we're doing. I think we'll go for... 
Opinion of Lich Pinion Clergy opinion is really good, but also Honest gives the clergy opinion to by the fact that we are Catholic. I think I'm gonna go for Be Honest. There we are. Press come in the County of Orvieto. Where is that? Uh County of Orvie Orvieto. Oh. Oh, we get a climb on it. No. No, it's okay. She can keep that. Um I'm alright with that, thank you. Right. Vincenzo, Mayor Vincenzo. Apparently, we have taken far too long. We should seize the opportunity. We bullied into some premature action. I agree. Get out of here, Vincenzo. I, I don't mind losing the prestige on that one rather than go for the men's break. Seeing as we just indulged in drink, and that's all she's got going for her right now. But three traits away. Well, technically, two traits away, I guess, from being able to pick architect. How are we looking on the wonder front? So we have now finished the great library, what, was, what we built then. My god, 60 development. I mean, I don't think I've ever had a county with 100 development. And there are certain provinces as well that you can found universities in with a high enough development. That would be something also to do because I've literally never done that before in the CK3. And I think that'd be as, as kind of a fun side activity. Probably not a terrible idea. Got some family members now. So what are you looking like? You're just robust. Yikes. Um, okay, let's play the safe bet. Let's go for the lustful intellectual. That'll do. And then our daughter, Fortuna. Uh, oh, sorry, Fortunata. Uh, she is just quick. So anybody with any intellectual trait. Luciano money, I feel like, is a waste marrying him to her. Seeing as he's genius. Um, Paladino money, our knight. I, f I feel like we want to go outside of our dynasty for this one. Um, you'll do. Potential alliance with the uh, Routiers of Montega Mon Monte Montegu. Where is that? Oh, it's a, it's a band. It's a mercenary band. Fine. Okay, fair enough. Finished our education. Only came out thrifty clerk. Come on. Right. Okay, fine. Um, if we marry her to him, that guarantees Herculean. Uh, who was your parent? Juliana Money had bright. She was beautiful. I'd rather keep genius. If we could find genius in something else, that would be fucking fantastic. Um... Let's see what we can pull up here. Genius and any sort of attractive trait also would allow us to con consecrate the bloodline. And there he is. Hetherios Botaniatus uh, is lustful. A lustful genius. With lustful plus comely. That's a good amount of extra... That's a good amount of extra fertility going on. Genius is guaranteed. Strong chance at Herculean as well. Bearing in mind we've got our bloodline kind of reinforcement there. And there's a chance that we could, out of this, get a kid capable of... Of consecrate... Not consecrating, sorry. Strengthening the bloodline. So I think we're going to go for it. Thank you, my friend. Oh, we're in late medieval. Right. Hopefully, he'll go for cranes. Although, apparently, we don't really need it anymore. Um, I can't believe our big limited factor now is, is dollar. After all that money we had the other day. And now there's fucking nothing. Okay, let's get you, then, into... What's the HRE's capital now? Over in Bern. Let's get you in Bern. You can sort that out. We can demand some payments anyway. 103. Shit. 103 and 217. It's not great, is it? And at long last, we have the architect trade again. There we go. Fine. How are we looking on the claims here? So we've got all of these ones dealt with. Moving up to Cassentino. Uh, then we need Bologna, and that's it. We've got everything. So we go to Warte, the whole of Ancona. That will connect our borders up quite nicely. Then, I mean, Padua. Piedmont is still really the one to chop down. So after we've finished with Ancona, we'll head over there, see if we can fabricate some claims on that. Tidy up all of Italy. Um, Italy, Italy, obviously, is is uh, just this northern half right now. This all counts as the Kingdom of Sicily. And, and, I mean, let's be honest, I'm not fighting Basil over it. Way too many troops. Absolutely clap our cheeks on that one. So I think we'll, um, I think we'll, I think we'll just let him have it. That's all yours. Second goal after that is, of course, find a way to actually vassalize the Pope. We may have to go to war with the Pope. We may have to fabricate claims if we go for Foggia, Tivoli, and Viterbo. Grab all of those, and then hopefully that's enough for the Kingdom of Romania. Make the Kingdom, make it a primary title, and then just offer him vassalage. We might have to wait for this current Pope to die, but he is 58, so won't be too bad. We might have to do that with our next character, seeing as the current character is what, like 50, yeah, 57 as well. So we got a couple of payments here, but that guy had the full 300, and you have the full 300 as well. Look at that. Okay, um, let's put this to good use then. So if we upgrade the amphitheater, holding text development growth. Good God, they're so good. <laughs> <laughs> we might be able to get a fully upgraded Venice by the end of today. It's going to be quite tight on the gold front. Um, especially now that... Oh, well, there we are. Um, especially now that we are kind of lacking on the stewardship as well. But the last time when we were fabricating all of those crazy hooks or, or uncovering those crazy hooks was because we had a guy with 28 stewardship. 
Stewardship? Intrigue. Sorry, I'm looking at the Stewardship tab. Uh, let's go for Herigeld or War Profiteer or it's my domain. I don't really want any, to be honest with you. Monthly income while at war plus 10%. Sure, go ahead. Another 300 there. Thank you, thank you, thank you. 165 on that one. Not too bad. Um, we, we've got to kind of... Oh! Hello, Modena. Oh, just a free vassalization there. I'm not going to complain about that. Um, I think... We're kind of getting to the stage now we've kind of hit critical mass again, where by the time this Colosseum finishes building, which is going to take all about two minutes, apparently, then we can immediately move on and upgrade something else. And I'm hoping we can kind of keep this cycle going and get everything decently upgraded. What do we need for the next level of Grand University? Just the gold. Well, it is just a gold limitation. Jesus. Okay. Um, you give more taxes, so I guess we'll go for you as well then. And finally, the Grand Fortress. There we go. So we can upgrade the other ones again, but we need a bit more gold on that one. So that's all of Ancona we've grabbed too. Um, Florence is independent. Hello. Uh, well, we flipped over to Cultural Head, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, we're now Cultural Head again because we vassalized the other dude, so we're the largest. Um, I don't know where to begin. It's all fallen apart. The, the HRE has just capitulated, and that means that there is a, a, a very big opportunity for us there. I mean, we could just sweep through and grab it all. It's either we do it or Biz grabs it. Uh... Let's get you... This is why I think we want to flip religion, because my god, it would save us time. Alternatively, we could just create our own religion up front. Uh, you don't need to control holy sets to make your own version of Christianity. Really? I thought you did. Oh, well. <laughs> well, shows how little I know. Um, I guess that's just for making a... Well, obviously, we've got it. What's money here? Uh, but which one? I mean, that looks like it could be a coin. Uh, money, money, money. Like a tree? Because uh, money does grow on trees. And it's the money family tree. Ah, there's a lot going on there. I like that one. Okay. Um, so I think we use the tree. And then we'll call it... Uh, we'll call it money. It's the money tree. Uh, adjective. I, I mean, I know this is probably all going to clear by the time we reload the game. Adjective money. Single follower. Money. Many follower. Monies. Just to really drive the point home. There we go. Uh, so with our next character then... Let's forget about that for a second with her, because obviously she's not... Well, she is pious, but not that pious. Um, unless we get profit. A profit as in, like, profit... Uh, as in, like, a profit of a, of, a, of a deity, not profit as in, like, fat stacks, which we have really have significantly achieved this series. I'm thinking, when we play as Zivrado, we need to give him his time in the uh, time in the spotlight. We play as Zivrado, I think, because he is... Uh, as long as we don't abuse Flagellant too much. Um, he counts as malnourished as well, you stinky boy. Um... Severe penalty, wow. Uh, well, it might not be Everardo then, depending on how long he lives. We could whip him to death and then play immediately as Anastasia money. She's got 14 learning as well, damn. Um, hmm. We could reform, we could, we could make a new religious branch with her then. What do you think? Anastasia money. I think, I think that's doable. I could, I could kind of hasten things up a little bit here. Really meta game it. I, I don't like doing that. Um, you know, I like our dynasty members to get their get their opportunities when when it comes to them. Um, did I pick scholarship focus? Oh no, right, it's because we've got over level ten skill and scholarship, so we can slowly pick it up points here. Um, your board's getting additional skills become your friends. We we could try and go to profit with her. How old is she before I commit to this ridiculous idea? She's sixty. Her mother lived to seventy nine. The only problem with our guy is she is a. <laughs> the only problem with our guy is that she is a. Uh, she's a drunkard. Or alternatively, we could swear fealty to the Mongolian Empire. What? <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, I think, in hindsight, you've won me over. Fucking hell, I've never seen a Mongol Empire that large. What was the Temujin, then? He disappeared quick, didn't he? Um, drank himself to death at the age of 62. Whoops. Um, and then we've got Chagatai, Joshi, Ogadai. Which one? It was Ogadai that, that, that took over Genghis Khan in real life, right? It's a Chagadai. I can never remember. Um, wow, they've actually blobbed out. I've never seen the Mongols actually get that far before. That's quite impressive. I wonder if they've had some rebalancing in a recent patch. Well, I'm going to try it with both characters. Let's not intentionally kill off characters. I never like doing it. Only if it's real kind of desperate, sweaty situations like in Persia or maybe in the Achievement series. I could, I could see myself doing that. But when it comes down to reforming a religion... I think if Jalinda Dates can't do it, we'll put everything we can into making Avrado do it. And if Avrado can't do it, we'll put everything we can into making his daughter do it. Eventually, we'll get it. Um, so, we'll start with Faithful. We'll head to Profit as soon as possible. You need to be doing all you can 
to uh, host feasts, perhaps. We'll uh, buy indulgence from the Pope. That's a good idea. Uh, brother, 750 freaking gold. Good Lord. Um, let's get you on religious relations then for a while, Pope. Uh, Archbishop, sorry. Uh, we'll deal with Ancona, seeing as we've already got all these claims. Similar, really? That is a, a surprise. I very much doubt they've got the same troop consistency as us. Wow, fucking hell. Coming in the start, you bloody cowards. I think we can still crack them, to be honest with you. I think we've still got anything to concern ourselves with there. Uh, no, I think I'll take the prestige rather than my stinky husband. Thank you. And until next time, no chance of piety there, but we'll do whatever we can in that regard. Right, go for their capital straight away. In fact, should we kill some of their troops? See if we can catch some unawares. Where are they going? So they're moving in that direction. I think we've just caught some. Oh, got him. That was exactly what I was hoping to do. Divide and conquer. Look at that. 42% already. Let's go for Ancona. Let's get this war dealt with as soon as possible. And then we want to start saving up gold to give the Pope his dollars. Oh, we accidentally crushed the rest of their army there. What was that? Or maybe they hired some some troops. Well, we got into a battle either way. Trebuchet's getting to work. Shouldn't take this too long to tidy up. Um, oh, fuck. I don't really care about this anymore. One thing come per stress level. Mana arms maintenance per dread. I, I imagine we are somewhat dreadful. Um, theology folks or medicine folks, there's a good argument for both here. The, the small health boost will help her live longer, potentially gaining more piety overall. But the piety plus one if you want the quick burn. I'm a little bit concerned. I also hate the fact that she never opens her eyes. She's kind of freaking me out. Because it genuinely looks like her, her eyes are just flesh colored rather than, rather than being closed. Hmm, that's a little weird. I'm not sure I like that one. Dolge and drink. Go on. As long as it can lower the stress. That's all we really care about here. Call a hunt. Yep, go for it. I know that that was a little preemptive, but again, chance of piety is probably a bit more a bit more important for us right now. 69%, and we are up to even more. I mean, our prestige has also been absolutely shit on there. Um, Dignified burial, 40% chance. That also gives us piety. I want the lowest... I don't want our court getting a plague at this point. Because we've got so many good courtiers. So many good family members. Come on. 89%. If we kill these, that might be the end of the war. Slay them. Destroy them, brother. Eat them. Good, 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 good. 90%. Balls. Uh, let's go to Fermo. They can't actually counter siege now, which is fantastic. Uh, I also can't unpause the game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, brilliant. Well, that's a bit of a concern, isn't it? Right. Excitement is always desirable. I'm so glad. You gain five and lose. Wow, because of all those. Jesus. I, yeah, I actually can't pause the game. What the hell's going on here? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, right. Okay, we good? There we go. We're better. Right. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Grand City of... We get everything, I see. I was going to say, the Grand City is a little bit... Uh... Oh, my God. We can hold it all. Nine out of 13 domain size. Bloody hell. All right, I'll take it. Hey, look at that. What a realm. And then we've got all these other places we can... Oh, my God. The whole thing is splintered. Nice is out. Provence. Upper Burgundy is gone. Holy shit. What has happened? Like, France and the HRE have just given up. Is Castile Islam? No, it's really not. Um, We've got Mualadi. Uh, but they're not really pressing on too far. 5% further, to be fair. Oh, they're Cathar! Shit. One of the biggest, the biggest, I would assume, Christian kingdom in the world right now, but outside of bloody fucking Orthodox, too. Look at that. <laughs> and then the hick from the Mongols just steamrolling ahead. They've picked up a load more stuff. I feel like we're in a bad situation, friends. I feel like we are going to get absolutely snowballed. Um, we might have to swear fealty to Biz and then maybe pick apart Italy from the inside to declare independence. We'll see how it goes. I feel like our dreams of getting all the metropolis is going to be very quickly crushed by the Mongols. They need to fall apart before we can do anything. Bear in mind, Baghdad was one of the... Uh, where's Baghdad these days? Somewhere around... I think I said it was over here. I was way out. Um, I mean, I quite clearly knew where it was because just bloody zoomed in on it. Anyway. Um, I think Baghdad is going to fall to the Byzantines before it falls to the Mongols, but the question is, who's going to win out of those two? They've built a hell of a round, though. 40,000 versus... How many of the Mongols got right now? Uh, no, I don't want to see you. I want to see Mongols. Whoa! <laughs> this is a bad situation for, for little old Venice to be finally kicking things off here. Sweet Jesus. We could... Oh, we can already usurp it! Um, what I was going to say before I distracted myself there is... um. We could wait until Byzantium and Mongolia fight 
And then we can... My God, they're attacking into Sweden. <laughs> um, and then we can attack into Byzantium for maybe Sicily while they're dealing with the Mongols. That could be a really good play. The timing on that is going to be freaking tight. And we might have to keep some gold in our back pocket just to always have, have that available to us. I'm going to ask the Pope for gold so then we can usurp his kingdom. Which I think is friggin' incredible. Um, of course we can't ask him to, to join us in fealty. He's the papacy. Well, every idiot said that in the comment section yesterday. You're banned. Uh, uh, what do you mean it's my fault for getting that? Uh, although, hang on. If we made the Empire of Italia, could surely, surely it falls under that too. Oh, I should have just given him... If we give him the Kingdom of Romania... Yeah, but Latium counts it, right? And then that falls under Italia. I wonder if we can actually offer it. Well, I mean, obviously we're not yet, but eventually we'll be able to. Maybe just with that. Maybe because the papacy is his primary title, we might still be able to offer him when we become an emperor vassalization. The only thing I'm concerned with is his primary title doesn't have any du jour land associated with it or, or any du jour lieges, so that, that might fuck with things. Anyway, uh, we've splintered Italy quite nicely. We've grabbed a shitload of land. We, we're going to steamroll now towards reforming the faith. And to be fair, at the speed we're going... All we need is Religious Icon, which isn't going to take us too long at all. Profit for the minus 50% Faith Reformation cost. I mean, to create a new faith, it's what? 2,585? So if my math is right, that's 1,700, roughly. Um, piety to reform a faith, which we'll grab hopefully long before then. Especially if we're doing things like buying indulgences and shit from the Pope. So this could be the start of it. We had our we had Massillon Jars, who, who really built the metropolis that is Venice. We've got... Galinda Dates, who's hopefully going to make the faith. And then her successor, Evrado, the warrior, can spread it. I like this plan. Let's go ahead and leave it there for today, then. Thank you all for watching. I've got a bit of news coming up in the next couple of days about some schedule changes that are only going to be happening over this weekend because I'm kind of having to travel in an emergency. Uh, but I'll talk about that more tomorrow because it's not going to be affecting things until uh, Saturday and Sunday, basically. So I don't want to worry people too early or confuse things. Thank you, in the meantime, to our executive producers over on Coffee for their support for the final month here in October before we move back over to Patreon now that they've fixed all of their problems. Thank you to Kyle my Doctor, My Little Cthulhu, Dracone, Big Weeb, Pang Power, Dork, The Wizard Gandhi, Ethox, Mythomatic, Bling Magica, DKO, Spooty, Booty Banger. My name is Indio and Siphon, along with, of course, everybody at the Executive Producers over on Coffee for their support. If your names aren't on this final list, please get in touch with me. Um, if you're not on the end screen or anything like that, please get in touch as soon as possible. Um, if I have missed you, I'll put you on the end screen um, on on Patreon regardless. We'll, we'll come up with something. Um, but again, I'm, I'm juggling like a load of shit again while we're kind of transitioning back over there. So it's a bit of a pain in the ass. So I apologize again if... If anybody has been left out. Thank you as well to Gordy number one, Rotten Flesh, Fernando Penna, Mohammed, Alvin Flang, Tabula Rasa, Warhawk, Ginza Blade, Cyber Monkey, Astro Sam 12345, The Thick Mick, Ultra Spider 2000, Snow Lauga, Sweet Tea, Neil M, and Kato for their support over at Coffee as well. And thank you all for watching. Hope you guys are enjoying a little bit of Venice now that we're kind of getting off the ground a little bit more. And I'll see you all tomorrow for probably the Mongols to clap us, to be honest. <laughs>